Hey, investor friends, I'm Michelle Markey, and if you're trying to up your investing game, you've come to the right place because today I'm going to share the investing wisdom and lessons from legendary mutual fund investor Peter Lynch, who ran the highly successful Magellan Mutual Fund at Fidelity for 13 years from 1977 through 1990, and he was able to gain one of the best return rates in the investing industry of 29.2% compounded annual returns, so that's absolutely amazing to do that for 13 years and also in a recent interview with his former employer Fidelity he shared these lessons about how to have the right investing mindset when it comes to investing in stocks and how to gain an edge as an average investor and also how to pick stocks and also I'll share some of my own reflections on both what he said in these clips and also what was only in the transcript on Fidelity's website because he has some more lessons that you can feel free to read about that weren't shared in the these video clips so I'll also reflect on those and if you also are trying to become a better investor I hope you'll like and subscribe to my video and YouTube channel because that's what I'm all about is helping you and I be the best investors we can be so thanks and so to reiterate Peter's key points here in order to be a good investor you should figure out what your investing temperament is like which means that you know how you're going to react or behave when and if the stock market is going in a direction you don't like, usually if it's going down and you don't wanna panic if it's going down 10 or 30%, you wanna know ahead of time what actions you're going to take and whether you're going to sell out earlier or later or buy even more stocks the more that the stock market is going down because generally the stock market has been one of the best places to be much better return rates than bonds or real estate that typically might give you between three to 5% average historical rates of returns, but stocks give you averages of seven to 10%. So knowing that it's better not to jump in and out of the markets and stay as invested as possible if you can. And if you're feeling a little bit worried about having too much money in the stock market, you could always take some of that out and have some of it in a money market fund like Peter was suggesting or a series I bond that's giving you 9.62% right now from the US government. So that's also another option to keep in mind. And also in the following clip, he talks about knowing what's within your circle of competence or within your area of expertise. And he reflected on how emerging markets or basically international stocks that are in developing countries are not within his realm of expertise. So you should know what kinds of things you're capable of understanding before you were to invest, as he talks about here. In the stock market, the most important organ is the stomach. It's not the brain. There's always, on the way to work, the amount of bad news you can hear is almost infinite now. So the question is, can you take that? I mean, do you really have faith that 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now, common stocks, a place to be? If you believe in that, you should have some money in equity funds. I mean, it's a question, what's your tolerance for pain? I mean, the stock market's a very good place to be, but I can toss a coin now. Is it going to be lower two years from now, higher? I don't know. More people lost money waiting for corrections and anticipating corrections than the actual corrections. Well, you ought to look in the mirror every day and say, what am I going to do if the market goes down 10%? What do you do if it goes down 20? Am I going to sell? Am I going to get out? If that's your answer. You should be reducing it today. Well, hey, this perfect record. I think the 13 years I ran Magellan, the market went down nine times, 10% or more. I had a perfect record. I went down more than the market. Every time I went down, I went down more. So I, I just didn't worry about it. The point is, would you say to yourself, do I need this money in a year? Do I need this money in two years? Do I need this money in three years? So my longer term, stock market's been the best place to be last 10 years, last 30 years, last 130 years. But if you need the money in one or two years, you shouldn't be buying stocks. You should be in a money market fund. Well, I think emerging markets, and I'm, that's not my expertise, but I mean, these markets have been really hammered. You know, and there, a lot of countries are doing a lot better. You know, I mean, so I think there's potential there. That's not my expertise, but I think emerging markets could be a place to research.
And in the following, Peter talks about how he doesn't dwell on what the overall economy is doing because nobody can really know where interest rates will be. So it's not so productive to focus on stuff like that that's hard for any of us to really know. But what we can control is studying businesses and companies so that we can see if it's a company we'd like to invest in. And that's where our energies are better spent, as well as to think of businesses like you might want to be a part owner of them and not as lottery tickets where where you're just randomly buying companies that you haven't researched because that would be like gambling and you don't want to do that and also to see if you have an edge in any kind of industry or type of business that you know a lot about like maybe you work in the semiconductor industry and you know certain things of what's going on with some of the best companies with AMD or Intel or Nvidia that gives you an edge in being able to invest in those kinds of companies so as much as possible you want to figure out where you have special insights and then study companies that you can determine if their stocks are something good that you'd like to invest in as follows. I, I never looked at the economy. I, I want to find out. The only thing I would look at what's happening right now. You know, what's going to happen a year from now? What's going to happen interest rates? I'd love to get next year's Wall Street Journal. I'd pay an extra dollar for it. That'd be very helpful. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. But I want to find right now. Well, I think anybody that's investing in the stock market has to understand you buy a company. These are not lottery tickets. He's behind every stock there's a company. If the company does well, over time the stocks do well, and vice versa. You have to look at the company. That's what you're researching. That's what we do at Fidelity. That's what I do. You're, you could be an interventional cardiologist, and you, you're putting in Abia meds in Pella. You say, wow, this really is an incredible breakthrough, preventing shock, preventing you know, hemodynamic support. It's an amazing. It's, it's, it's a breakthrough. It's great. It works. But you, you're actually using it. I mean, or you're, you're assisting. You're in the operating room seeing this breakthrough. That's, you know, you saw way ahead of most people. That's an edge. You need an edge on something. And Peter reflected on what's changed the most in investing over the last 50 years. And he found it great that we have access to free information in near real time. And I think that that's good and bad because even though it's awesome that all of us could download quarterly and annual reports from companies, investor relations webpages, it could lead to some adverse consequences where maybe we feel like there's information overload and we have too many choices. So that might lead to worse decision making. And there could also be increased competition now that everybody has access to the same information where with the rise of zero commissions to buy stocks there's way more people investing now than 50 years ago so maybe we're dealing with some of that but he also talked about how investors have gained an edge compared to professionals which i think we're seeing play out with the wall street bets redditors that are like the david going up against wall street as the goliath so in that way i think he's also right that we've gotten a pretty decent edge as individual investors in what he said in the following. Well, the data now is so good. I remember when Nike, we own Nike, we had to wait for the mail to come to our library. Now, when somebody reports earnings, it's telecast all over the world. They have an investor presentation, they show a balance sheet. So information is much better. So theoretically, the individual's edge has improved in the last 20, 30 years versus the professional. The data is there. It's free. But I think a lot of people, the problem is they have so many prejudices, they have so many biases, they won't look at a railroad. They won't look at an oil company. They won't look at a steel company. You know, they, they, they're only going to look at companies growing 40% a year. They won't look at turnaround. So one thing, you just don't have so many prejudices and biases. I bought companies with unions. You have to really be agnostic. And a lot of people, they're just not flexible. I think flexibility, is, and that's why Fidelis had so many great fund managers. We're, they're very flexible what they'll look at. And finally, for a couple of final lessons from Peter Lynch that there weren't clips for, but were on the transcript, I wanted to tell you these because I think they're also very important to keep in mind. And one of them is, what is the biggest mistake that retail individual investors like you and I make? And also, how do you know when to sell a stock? And for the first question, he said that the public's careful when they buy a house and when they buy a refrigerator, when they buy a car, they'll work hours to save $100 on a round trip air ticket. They'll put $5,000 or $10,000 on some zany idea they heard on the bus. 
that's gambling that's not investing that's not research that's just total speculation and then how do you know when to sell a stock he said that deciding when to sell is exactly the same thing as when you buy it you have a certain story why i bought this this company is going from crummy to semi crummy to getting better and the company has plenty of cash so they're not going to go bankrupt and when the business goes from semi crummy to better or good, I'm probably out. You sell the company that was the growth story when there's no room to grow. And when Taco Bell was only in Southern California, where could they go? Well, they went to Central California, then they were everywhere. I mean, it's a 70 year story. You have to define when a company is getting close to maturity and that's when you exit or the story deteriorates. If the story is intact, you hold on. And so I think he said some really important lessons where a lot of people just quickly buy stocks, whereas they would spend months trying to figure out if a house in a certain neighborhood is a good one, like if they have a good school system or if it's safe to live there and what's the condition of the house and the plumbing and the insulation and so on. But they don't spend nearly as much time when they study individual company stocks. So maybe if people don't have the time or wherewithal to study individual companies, they might just be better off investing in a low cost index fund like the S&P 500 or doing something that doesn't involve too much effort like they would put into researching a house or car. And then also when it comes to exiting a company stock, he made some great points about looking at where a company can still have room to expand and if it's in the early days of its expansion. Like one of my friends told me about how Tesla is still in the early days of expanding. So if you feel like you really understand electric vehicles and also battery technology, maybe there's plenty of market share to still gain. So that could be a really profitable company to perhaps be invested in. If you feel like you understand Tesla and similar companies in the electric vehicle and battery space. So those are some things to keep in mind. And I think it's really important when Peter said that if the story has changed, like if instead of going on the uptrend that a company has started going in reverse, like getting really bad, then maybe that is a really good reason to have to exit because because you no longer understand what's going on. Like when investor Bill Ackman left Netflix because the story had changed with them wanting to introduce ads and also cracking down on password sharing. So Bill Ackman didn't know what was going on with the Netflix story, so he exited the stock. So we should all keep these lessons in mind so we make the best possible investing decisions in our future. And so if you enjoyed this video or learned something, please like and subscribe. And I wish you well on being the best investor you can be. Till next time.